Welcome to an episode of InRange. I'm here to talk to you today about this 1857 Muff pistol. Yeah, let's go ahead and just get those jokes out in the comments now because we're going to be saying the words Muff pistol quite a few times through this video. And the meaning of that word now, colloquially speaking, and the meaning of that word back then in the Victorian era uh, were somewhat different. Um, a muff back then was essentially a double-sided glove, typically made out of some animal fur, that a woman or a man would put their hands into like this to keep themselves warm in a cold environment. It was like a little decorative Victorian era, sort of high-end piece of clothing. And uh, that was called a muff. Now, it's pretty obvious why that word became what it is now. Um, but back then that meant that particular piece of clothing and that piece of clothing and type of thing still exists today. Um, and they are still called muffs. Now, uh, the idea of targeting women specifically for self-defense and self-defense weapons is nothing new. And uh, this right here is an example of that. Now, of course, a man could carry this as well in his pocket or something like that. And it's obviously very small and is a single shot smooth bore 36 caliber. We're going to get to that more in a minute. It's a little more than that. Uh, single shot percussion black powder self-defense pistol. Now, the idea of a CCW or dedicated carry piece is not new in 1857. In fact, you can go back to the 1700s and there are flint locks, box locks, that are designed specifically for that purpose. And that's a video for another day. But I picked this one up and it has absolutely no manufacturer markings on it. It says 1857, cast steel, patent pending on the hammer. However, when we zoom in later, I am quite confident that this is an Allen and Thurber um, muff pistol. The same guys that made the repeating pepper box, which I've done already on this channel before. But this is interesting and unique. And even though it's just a single shot percussion black powder self-defense pistol, there's a little more going on here than meets the eye. In fact, you don't even load it from the muzzle. In the style of the Queen Anne flintlock, the barrel screws off. And you very simply fill the chamber with black powder, seat a projectile on it, and then screw the barrel back on. Then you carefully pull back on the hammer, place your percussion cap on there, let it rest delicately, and then go ahead and hide this in your muff for any self-defense needs. Now, here's what's interesting about this. The bore diameter is bigger at the back than at the front. So it's 36 caliber at the front, but in the back it's somewhere around 38 caliber, and there's a little bit of gap here so you can place a larger size projectile back here that you could normally not do from muzzle loading. So for example, if this is a 36 caliber bore and I wanted to shove a 40 caliber round ball down that bore, that's going to be a very hard thing to do. But since I can take the barrel off, fill it with powder, then seat the ball by just putting it on top of that chamber and then screwing the barrel back on, I now have a 40 caliber ball that's going to go down a 36 caliber bore. And what that does is swage, fancy word for squish, the soft lead projectile. It also means that it gives it more time to gather more pressure and therefore velocity. So even though this is going to be inevitably a pretty impotent gun in terms of what we would consider a self-defense weapon now, the fact that a 40 caliber ball is being swaged down to a 36 caliber exit means that we're getting more velocity out of this than we would if it was just a standard muzzle loader. So let's go ahead and check the kind of powder charges and stuff we can get right here, and we'll do the math later. So I'm going to take this 40 caliber ball out, put that in my bag. And so we would just take our black powder. I'm going to turn my little scale on here. I'm going to fill this. You just literally fill it. This is 3F black powder. And let's see what powder charge this can hold. So by weight, we are getting nine grains of black powder in this. Now by volume, we're probably getting 10 grains. So nine grains volume, 10 grains, excuse me, nine grains by weight, 10 grains volume of black powder. 10 grains of black powder is not exactly an overwhelming amount of a powder charge. Now let's see the weight of the ball that we're getting here. This is an 80 grain projectile. So we have 10 grains of black powder and an 80 grain projectile. Let's go ahead and zoom in and I'll show you that whole loading process. First off, I think you can see why I identified this as an Allen and Thurber firearm. The machining, metallurgy, the hammer are all identical to this pepper box. It is very much the same style of grip, 
same type of metal, same kind of flourish, same hammer, same font even. So while I can't confirm 100%, it could be a very good knockoff. This does appear, appear to be an Allen and Thurber muff pistol in my opinion. If you want to see the video about the pepper box, I'll link to that in the description below. But let's go ahead and go through the loading process here. So very simply, probably came with a wrench. I don't have that anymore, but it doesn't matter. You unscrew the barrel. Then you merely fill this chamber with black powder. Get the excess off there. Get a ball. Again, I'm putting an oversized ball. It's gonna go down this 36 caliber bore. And then you just literally screw the barrel back on. Extremely simple to load. Then you get your percussion cap. Carefully lift the hammer. Place that on the cone as such. And we are ready to go. Now this is a double action only, just like the pepper box, meaning it sits like this when you're carrying it in your muff. And when you press the trigger through its full cycle, the hammer will cock and fire all in one instance. Okay, I put three rounds over the chronograph and uh, really easy to load, much easier than a traditional muzzle loader with this screw off barrel. That's really cool. Um, the trigger is heavy and long to press. And uh, although it was really easy to hit the target, you just kind of point do your thing and it's no problem. That was, that was easy. Now that said, here's the results. 250 feet per second with an 80 grain projectile and 10 grains of 3F GoX powder. Now, GoX isn't the best black powder in the world. You could probably get a little bit higher velocities than that, but you're not gonna get dramatically better velocities than that. That turns into 76.2 meters per second. And in terms of what we're deploying to the target, 11 foot pounds or 15 joules. That is impotent by pretty much every measure of any cartridge, even back then. Even in the 1850s, that would have been considered a very underpowered last ditch self-defense weapon. However, compared to some of the things we see targeting women for self-defense today, this is actually better than some of the options that they're promoting in the modern era, like we've seen on the channel with Annette Evans and the On Her Own series. But again, 11 feet per second, excuse me, 11 foot pounds of energy. I mean, if you were to put this straight into someone's face and press the trigger, they're probably not going to like it. And if this suddenly is surprisingly pulled out of your muff and fired at a ruffian, it may have the desired effect. It's certainly better than nothing at all and certainly easy to conceal. It's nicely made, it was cheap in the day, it's still not very expensive to acquire these if you find them. And actually because of so little recoil, blast and fire, it's actually quite fun to shoot. So you could actually have a good time just shooting this for fun recreationally. In terms of using it for self-defense, well, 11 foot pounds or 15 joules doesn't exactly uh, blow anyone's socks off now, does it? Anyways, a very interesting piece of Victorian era history and firearms and self-defense. Interesting to see something sort of targeting women for self-defense as early as that and even before that with flintlocks. And um, it's always fun to shoot a piece of history here on InRange TV. If you like this kind of content, please consider supporting us on Patreon. This stuff isn't going to go viral. It's really the truly interested people that are interested in topics like a muff pistol. Although the name of this video alone may make it get more attention than it would normally. Um, really love doing this kind of historical stuff. And it's you, the viewer, that keep this channel alive. We wouldn't be here without people like you supporting us at patreon.com slash inrangetv. If you can't, I do understand. Please just subscribe to the channel and share with your friends. Help us defeat that algorithm. Thanks for watching.